Hello everyone, welcome back to Homestuck. Last time, the Alpha Kids, they talked like people. <laughs> and then they all died and went god tier. So there we go. Um, if you're enjoying the series, you know, like, subscribe, become a member to get these episodes a week early, and let's see what's gonna happen. I've fixed the sc screen region so that you can actually see everything that's happening. Um, and I bet you in two pages this setup's going to disappear and I'm gonna have to change it again. Let's find out! Oh my gosh! <laughs> They're fighting their villains! Oh, what is wrong with Jack? Ah! Oh my! <laughs> what is this? Oh no! Oh wait! No, are, th are the kids here? Are they here? Oh my god, they're here! They're here! Oh, thank god! Okay. Well, bye, Jack the third at this point. <laughs> Where did you send him to? Hi, guys! What the hell is that? <laughs> Hi! <laughs> okay. Ah. Uh, um. I'm your grandma, but you're also my mom and dad, kind of. Are you Jake? Ah, uh, yeah. Hi Jake, I'm Jade. Nice to finally meet you. Wow, um, yeah. <laughs> and you must be Jane. Uh, me? Mm-hmm. Oh, I, uh, yes. It's so nice to meet you too, Jane. Y yes. So, uh, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> Where are your pants? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Hick spring trap X2 combo. Spring trap? Five nights at Freddy's? Okay. Oh no, the mind control, animal control. Oh no, this is not good. Please don't nuke everybody. What is this? Oh no, Jade. Jade, please. Bark! <laughs> uh, uh. Oh, what? Why do you want that? Pew! Oh, space zapped it on her head, okay. Oh, oh dear. Obey, oh, obey, obey, obey. <laughs> no, please don't tell me I have to do something now. <laughs> Obey. <laughs> this looks like a little baby. Dirk, do it. <laughs> oh, no. No, don't attack Jade. <laughs> Pow, doof. What, where is she going to send him? Oh, she sent him out here, too. Great. Oh no. <laughs> now Roxy's a baby. <laughs> and and Jake has a tummy ache. <laughs> what are we doing now? Huh? Evil Jade was not on my bingo card, by the way. <laughs> Roxy. <laughs> Well, this is pretty bad. <laughs> ah, I'm going to cry. <laughs> Suckers! End of Act 6, Act 5. <laughs> Eat that! Boon dollars! Act 6, Intermission 5. Oh, so we're going to see everything that happened right before they showed up, huh? Dave, are you there? <laughs> okay, this is year three. Come in, Dave! He's got a crab watch. This is Carcat. Over. Answer me, you jack off. Don't be all like, you're too busy to pick up. Who are you trying to kid? You're quite possibly the only person on this meter who's got even less of a, on his nutrition plateau than me. Even the mayor has a more demanding schedule than we do. Let's face the fucking facts. Wait, you think this can town run? <laughs> what? You think that can town run itself? Fat chance. Dave. God damn it, Dave! I have a problem! No, we have a problem! 
sky is visible through the naked eye. We can't be much more than a few hours away. This is it, what we've all been waiting for. Three of the longest human years we'll ever have to live for the rest of our lives. Sunk into this depressing laboratory, which by all accounts should never have functioned as anything but our eternal tomb. I have no idea how you're even supposed to stop this thing, do you? Well, sending it blasting off somewhere at the speed of light sure seemed like a good idea at the time. And now that we're finally here, after all the waiting and drama and boredom and stupid bullshit with our ancestral ghosts, even, and even disregarding the one hilariously neglected detail that this meteor has no fucking brakes, I still don't think we're ready for this. <laughs> <sighs> I don't... How do I even address this shit? Okay, how about this? Since I can't think of a better general purpose question to help break the ice in literally any imaginable social situation. <laughs> Terezi, what? Where are your fucking pants? Z! <laughs> oh no. My pants? What are you talking about? They're on my legs. I wasn't talking to you! Oh. Dave, we have a big problem here! Oh no, he's turning into Caliborn. Don't do that. <laughs> What? I think it's time we had a, uh, what did you call it, an intervention? For Rose? No, not Rose. Why would I be talking about Rose? She doesn't have a major problem she needs to be confronted about by her friends before she flushes her whole life down the gaper, does she? Uh, yeah, kinda. Why? Because she likes to drink that goofy human soporific that makes her a lot funnier and more charming than usual? How is that a problem? I'm talking about Terezi. Man, Terezi doesn't need an intervention. She just drinks a lot of soda. How can you not see how much that's a huge fucking problem? It's red fizzy shit water, dude. Who cares? Okay, can we just once acknowledge that we are mutual aliens to each other and such as such possibly have different values and standards about things? Just this one time, Dave. Thanks. Terezi made her choices. Among them was to begin guzzling untold leaders of that putrid citrus circus cola. Think of it like a rite of passage, like something that just goes along with the territory when someone you almost imperceptibly begins turning into a juggalo. Wait, fuck, maybe she does need an intervention. She needs to wake up so we can talk to her about this, and she won't wake up! What do I do? Did you try kicking her? Yes! Uh, I might have ideas. <laughs> Snore! <laughs> Throw the crab at her. Well, wherever she wakes, we all need to have a serious talk about this. If she's in this condition when we get to the new session, it'll be a goddamn embarrassment. Not to mention deadly. Need I remind you who's still... who's still following us? She doesn't look primed for battle from where I'm standing. She needs to act as... we need to act as a unified front, Dave. We need to let her know that as her friends, we can't stand by and watch her degrade herself like this. Man, I don't know. Sounds like you want to make this needlessly melodramatic. <laughs> Stand by, I'm putting you on Speaker Crab. <laughs> speaker Crab? Yes, Speaker Crab. Man, don't put me on Speaker Crab. <laughs> she needs to hear from you, Dave. She trusts you. God, honestly, she can do whatever she wants. I put this all behind me a while ago. Why do you really want me in this conversation? Is it just that you don't know what to say by yourself? <laughs> Maybe it is, Dave. Maybe that's exactly what, a f what it fucking is. I'm sorry I'm not a god tier. I'm not so fortunate as to be blessed with the gift of gab like you. What? That badge you earned. You know, the one that makes it easier to talk to people. Like, really open up your feelings and say whatever needs to be said. <laughs> you think that's what that does? Isn't it? No, dude. That's not what the gift of gab does. Okay, then what does it do, wise guy? Its utility isn't really comprehensible to lowly mortals, sorry. You snide shoot, Huffer! Why don't you come up here so I can push you off this building? Nah, uh, I'm putting you on speaker crab, and then together we are going to keep it real as shit. Do you hear me? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I'm a floating disembodied head. What do you actually want from her? Do you want her to stop drinking Fago and falling asleep in puddles of red fruit disc corn slobber? Or do you want her to somehow address the root of those habits and cut it all out for good? Yes, I want her to do that. The latter thing. Yeah, I can understand where you're coming from. But in situations like this, I think you need to remind yourself there's only so much you can do for somebody. And maybe they aren't going to want or need your help. And you just have to figure out how to deal with that. Like, at some point in your life, one of your friends might start spending all their time with a guy you think is bad news. And you just have to decide if you need to intervene as a friend or just let it all go because people change and drift apart or whatever. Because that's just something that happens. 
Dave, your wisdom, my god, is knocking my socks off. Holy shit, please tell me the secret to your wise ways. And while you're at it, maybe you could tell me the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> Look, all I'm saying is, there comes a time in every young woman's life when she has to come to terms with her decision to gradually morph into a juggalo, while all her friends and loved ones watch on in dismay. Drezzy strolled through the dark carnival and taken a great brooding whiff of that delicious festive asshole, and the choice she's made is all too clear. She's down with the clown. No! Don't say that! It's true, man. You can live in denial for only so long, but as you bro, I have to say it like it is. She and Gamzy, man? That is literally a thing. They're in total hate square together. Total kiss me spades, dude. No, that's not what I meant. I mean, I know that. Just why do you have to put things so colorfully? I guess I do the same thing, but you always seem to take it to a different level of gross. Just please say shit normally for a change, okay? Regarding Gamzy, yeah, I knew about that already. Oh, really? Then what the fuck have I been tiptoeing around all this time? Goddamn! I thought this was supposed to be like the big secret that would destroy you if you found out. <laughs> Motherfucker, please! Do you think I'm an idiot? I suspected this was going on for a long time. I was just being like you, playing it cool, letting her do whatever. Then why is it a problem now? Because this is the last straw! We're supposed to be ready for action by now! Not comatose half-naked and fago sticky God, I wonder what sort of bullshit she's got her belief he's got her believing in now about the mirthful messiahs and Shangri-La and all that garbage. It makes me so sad to think she's caught up in his superstitious web of lies. It's been awful watching the person I used to know slowly drift away from me to the point where she might as well be gone. How did you manage to deal with that? What? You and she used to see each other all the time. What happened? Like I said, I just put it behind me. She started sneaking around in vents and stuff, acting suspicious, trying to hide the fact that she was seeing him. Like she was to obviously ashamed of it and worried how I'd react. But it was hella transparent that it was going on, so I just said, that's fine. Y'all can do your black rom thing with the juggalo. It's your decision. But I can't keep playing along. Can't do that quadrant thing. It's just too weird for me. I'm not a troll and I'm not open-minded about getting multicultural. I still don't understand the spades thing, and it makes me really fucking uncomfortable even trying to imagine how that works. And I sure as fuck don't want to date anybody who's got a hate clown on the side. So I said no hard feelings, I still like you and all, do whatever makes you happy, I'll just be over here in the hypergravity chamber training to beat Lord English. We have a hypergravity chamber? Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> what about you? Haven't you been talking to Gamzee this whole time? Or is he just balls out lying to you about sneaking around in the meteor with Terezi? I thought more rails were supposed to be open with each other about stuff like that. Yeah, uh, Gamzee ended our Mora allegiance quite some time ago. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, sorry to hear about that. <laughs> It's fine. It was a really dead-end, pale relationship. At first, it really seemed like I was a necessary part of his life, keeping his shit under control. But as time went on, he just got completely disinterested and wasn't keeping up his end of the thing at all. He started getting so unbelievably self-satisfied and pious, like way more than he ever was before. Like he's just so completely convinced he's found his calling, that this session is the gateway to the promised land where he'll fulfill his destiny. He's so caught up in his idiotic schemes, he couldn't give a fuck about me anymore. Whatever. At least he stopped killing people. <laughs> Amazing I spent three years on this rock and never said one thing to the guy. I saw him once, though. Just a glimpse in a dark hallway. Kind of like seeing a blurry purple Bigfoot with a huge boner. <laughs> no, God. That fucking God tier outfit. What a goddamn faker. I can't wait for the life of me imagine where he got that thing. I know Kanaya sure as hell didn't make it for him. The man literally has no shame. <laughs> Why is he wearing it? I don't know. I don't think he even knows. Maybe to make a good impression on his fake-ass religious idol after he thrusts his sacred god piece through the gates of Shangri-La. <laughs> the best thing we ever do together is just slam this asshole's dumb religion. Yeah! <laughs> really, it's the most hilarious fucking horseshit I've ever heard. I mean, pretty much all religions are wrong, and there's but there's wrong, and then there's wrong. <laughs> As in zero chance of ever being proven right about even a single thing, dude. Ever, ever, ever. <laughs> It's so true! I wish I could see the look on his face when he finally realizes everything be he believes is a lie! <laughs> be one sad clown that day. His bulge will probably deflate and then make this high-pitched uh, noise plus corresponding flatulence. Hey, Dave! What do you think will happen to us after we meet up with the others? I mean, as friends. What do you mean as friends? I mean, will we still get to be bros? Uh, yeah. No offense, dog, but that's a dumb and neurotic question. <laughs> 
No, but see, we're going to meet all these other people, John among them. And John's your best friend, so will you ostensibly resume that friendship where you left off? And John and I had a few testy conversations with each other one day, and in most of those, I made a fool of myself. I guess we became friends that day, maybe? But the reality is, it was just one day, and he'd be well within a reasonable frame of mind not to give a crap in hindsight about the guy who trolled him once three years ago. And the same goes for Jade. I thought we had a decent rapport, but again, it was only one day and forever ago. She probably barely remembers me at this point. Whereas that doesn't matter for you because you go way back with them. It's like a fucking heartfelt reunion for you guys. Where does that leave me? I can't really call Gamzy a friend anymore. Who knows if my friendship with Terezi will ever be what it was before. I used to be pretty close with Kanaya, but now she and Rose never leave each other alone for more than a fucking minute. All my other friends are dead, and now we're leaving the dream bubbles behind, and then there's you, so I'm just wondering what happens next. You forgot the mayor. Pretty damn tight with the mayor, aren't you? The mayor's friendship is a universal constant, and I am insulted beyond comprehension as well as my capacity to vomit that you would insinuate otherwise. Yeah, mayor rules. Uh, but as usual, you're just overcomplicating this. Just like you overcomplicate everything. Friendship, leadership, romance, shipping grids, and dick battles. It's really simple. Our meteors show up and Tokyo Drift to a dead stop in the new session, at which point we'll be keep be bros for life or something, and I'll start being friends with John and Jade again because they're my friends and never stop being that. John will also be your friend because he's cool and also a doofus will be easy to be friends with. Jade will be your friend too because she's nice and likes being friends with people. I can personally guarantee you that she will be happy to see you. And as for the new people, well, I don't know about them, but they'll probably all be your friend too. All I know is that two of them are my parents, and two of them are John's parents. And ain't no rule that says you can't be friends with your bro's mom and pop. Especially when your bro's mom and pop are a couple of sassy teens. <laughs> as for Terezi, I don't know. I guess we'll see what happens. As for Gamzee, fuck that guy with a balloon poodle. Friendship lesson secured. The end. <laughs> Smack, smack. No, that, that's Roxy. <laughs> the smack, smack. This is too Roxy coded. Okay. Smack, smack. <laughs> oh, look who's coming around. <laughs> honk. <laughs> Wake up, sleepyhead. Honk, honk, honk. Yeah, that's right. Time to face the fucking music. All right. Oh, my God. Don't do that to me. What the hell is this? Hey, you. Computer man. I need more help. No. Computer man! Assist me with more hot tips! No. Yes! I'm having a trouble understanding, Blue Hat! <laughs> this is a shameful exploitation of our arrangement. We weren't supposed to talk anymore once you left Earth. I did not agree to those terms! Every time we talk, you complain that I am being self-indulgent. But you always come back for more. It's like you can't get enough of me. I think you might be obsessed. Give me more hot tips, asshole! You, know, you only made that cow top so you could talk to me on the go, didn't you? No. Please don't lie. Why else would you use it to, to talk to, or who else would you use it to talk to in your solo session, Gamzy? But you haven't even said one word to him through that device. You never even refer to him by his name. That clown has been an adequate peon. When it comes to doing things I don't want to do, there is no reason to speak to him through my fun helmet. You should try to be better friends with him. He basically ditched his best buddy for you. Who cares? He reveres you and you treat him like shit. Yes. So... So, uh, I guess you're off to a pretty good start about being a god, I guess. Thank you. Look, I just said a polite thing. Now reward me with what I want. Ugh. Yellow Hat is very fast, but as a minion he has, and as a minion he has been very useful. But I'm having trouble determining the, the abilities of Blue Hat. Yellow Hat and Blue Hat? You should come up with better names for them than that. <laughs> like what? Like, I don't know, maybe some cool mobster names? Mobster names? Why would I give them mobster names? Because mobsters are cool. They don't look like mobsters, they look like fucking leprechauns. Anyone could be a mobster though, even cherubs and leprechauns. Being a mobster isn't about what you look like, it's about what's inside. <laughs> wow, that is so profound. Now stop stalling and give me tips. Are those the only two you've unlocked so far? Yes, I have conquered the second planet, and I have now traveled to the third. Before I conquer this one, I would like to know what Blue Hat does. He's pretty much doing what he does. He seems to be stuck. Is he broken? No, he's just slow. What? That's his power. Yellow Hat is fast, Blue Hat is slow. That is a horrible power. How is that even a power? It just is. Ugh. I was looking forward to achieving more powerful minions, not more malingering fools who take up space in my dark carnival. Do they get better than this? 
That depends on what you mean by better. Oh my god, we okay, we are done, bye! <laughs> End of Act 6, Intermission 5, Intermission 1. Cool. We're on the boat. Nana! And also, to a lesser degree, Jaspers! <laughs> but, you know. Wake up, sleepyhead. Wait, why'd I even say that? Stay asleep all you want, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Thanks, Dave Sprite. Wait, Dave Sprite got his wing back? How did that happen? But you're kind of missing some important shit here. We spent three faux relativistic years cruising through the metaphysical ass crack of nowhere. And when we finally did get here, you're all tuckered out? Like you didn't sleep enough on this boat already? Some of us got the sick nastiest shit I had anyone ever got. Got. I owe to this friggin' boat. Dude, this is a big deal. Everyone's waiting for us out there. I mean, probably. <laughs> I don't know where we are, some green hilly place with all these stone hinges sprinkled around. Did you know there could be a plurality of stone hinges? I didn't, but guess fucking what. Hinges are plenty where this place is concerned. Hey, where's Jade? This is this is interesting, because Dave Sprite still feels like old Dave. It's funny. The ring. Guess she left already. Maybe there was an emergency somewhere in her doggy senses letter there. Maybe she fell down a well. <laughs> what do you think, John? Think our teen parents fell down a well? Nah, I sincerely doubted any of them would be that pathetic. Whatever it was, it must have been important enough for Jay to ditch us like this. Either that or she, uh, maybe she was that desperate to finally get away from me. Uh, between you and me, John, I don't really handle things well with her as I could have. Oh, well, maybe real Dave will treat her better. Or not, I don't know. I did her a favor cutting Bird Dave out of her life. <laughs> Nobody really deserves Bird Dave as a boyfriend or a friend or anything. It's like getting one of those janky Daves from the bargain bin at the Dave Depot. <laughs> or one of those marked down Daves the day after National Dave Day. It's like somebody taxidermized your Dave and expected you not to notice. Feathers? What feathers? <laughs> no, that Dave is totally normal and okay. You should just go back to being bros with real Dave when you see him. I'll be fine. I'll just flap around, do my own thing, alone. I'm just completely all right with that at this point. We had our ups and downs, John, but all in all, it was cool to see this go on this road trip with you. There were some times, man, the times, I'm telling you, they were unreal. I bet you people would pay good money to see every second of the madcap stunts that were going down on this ship basically 24-7. <laughs> Falls could talk, wow. <laughs> eh, just joking, it was seriously boring as hell. But I mean, it was still cool, so yeah. Hey, uh, what's that ring, anyway? Seeing with that ring before, I guess it was just like... Okay, John has a magic ring for some reason. No need to mention that or anything. Where'd you even get that? You can't even hear me. You got all your snooze on so hard. Ain't gonna wake you up to hassle you about no ring. You probably should have said all this stuff when you were awake anyway. Like the stuff about friendship. Ah, fuck it. I'll just leave another one of my patented magic notes taped to your shoe or your cowlick or something. My magic notes rule. I'll miss leaving them taped on stuff. <laughs> I sure do like to talk to myself a lot, don't I? <laughs> wow, why have I never made this observation? Probably need to be a bird for exactly three years to finally have that epiphany. I wonder if real Dave ever had that epiphany. Probably not, because he's not a bird. Eh, bottom line is, being a guy who's also a bird makes you think. Anyway, I'm out. <laughs> okay, bye, Dave Sprite. What is in the background? Oh, it's, it's Dave Sprite pictures, okay. P.S. Happy birthday, John. Have some watermarks for the road. <laughs> Act 6, Intermission 5, Intermission 2. Oh, God. He's assembling... What? <laughs> he killed that turtle. He's assembling the felt. This is weird. <laughs> I unlocked more gnomes! I thought they were leprechauns. I don't care what they are! Okay. I have now conquered four planets. I have the same amount of gnomes under my command. Yellow hat, blue hat, red hat, and now purple hat. Congratulations. The planets are becoming increasingly difficult to conquer. I almost did not manage to destroy the purple planet within the allotted time. Unfortunately, the quality of the unlocked gnomes has not increased to match the escalated difficulty of my quest. Seems to be just the opposite. These gnomes are shit! What's wrong with the new gnomes? Okay, Red Hat. He has no fucking powers at all. Unless his powers to follow me around constantly. Yeah, that's basically what he does. Purple Hat is even worse. In his Is his power to dance around all the time while singing riddles to me? Yes. Awful! Purple Hat's behavior is so infuriating. I have attempted to murder him several times, but to no avail. You can't kill Purple Hat. He's too lucky. That's also his power, being really lucky. What good does that do to me? I don't know. Get him to solve puzzles for you, or use him as a human shield sometimes. Uh, I guess I mean gnome shield. Oh yeah. That's actually a really good idea. You shouldn't be whining about how lame your minions are. As you accumulate more, your job will obviously 
is to obviously to combine their talents in creative ways to overcome the increasingly difficult challenges on your quest. Synergize your time gnomes. Make more than the sum of their pointy hats. That's going to be difficult. They're all idiots. Nobody said it would be easy. <laughs> Fine. I have no more questions for now. Hey, did you kill the cute turtle? No. But I can see your past trail. You're standing there holding a gun and pointing it at the turtle. Okay, then, yes. I killed the turtle. Boo! John, wake up. John. John, reality is falling apart. <laughs> hey there, it's Blue Booey again. See him there, just off the starboard shit? Or shit? No, it's shit, okay? Yo, watch how far I can fork him from. Mina, put the trident down. Don't make me confiscate it again. <laughs> confiscate? <laughs> <laughs> They've got a pirate ship, okay. Hey, it's John. Riska, is that you? Yeah, get over here. Ah, alright. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> I like their pirate crew. Also, Riska got her uh, fancy coat. Nice. <laughs> Tavros is like the... <laughs> Swab, the poof deck, Tavros. Uh, okay. <laughs> nice to see you again, John. It's been too long. Yeah. Actually, hasn't it been- Oh my god, it's it's not Roxy. Okay. Terezi is here. And the whole deal was, uh, John was kind of Terezi. But a little different. How was he different? Um, I think he was- Now that's Jake. Fuck. <laughs> it's been too long. Um. Um. Hi guys, what's going on? <laughs> it's, it's Roxy! Oh my goodness. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to actually pause and listen to myself use it. Also, the frickin' and we went back to normal. Hold on. Okay, we're back to normal. <laughs> there. Jesus, it is very hard not to slip into Roxy while doing this voice. <laughs> it's like Roxy's voice, but without the accent. How did I even manage that? Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Actually, hasn't it been exactly a year? I think it was my birthday last time we met, too. <laughs> a year for you, maybe. Who even knows how long it's been out here, but who cares? The point is, as you can see, the plan I described to you before is in full swing. Ah, uh, you mean the big treasure hunt with all those black maps? <laughs> yes, but they aren't black anymore. Not totally. Everything's gone exactly as I intended. English has taken the 88, hook, line, and sinker, or bait. <laughs> He's been chasing our extended party around the ring, blowing shit up with his monster breath, thus revealing the path to the treasure in the process. I must say, for an evil mastermind, the guy's kind of a dope. Supposedly his every move is a carefully calculated ploy to assure his existence in the first place. Yet here he is, wrecking the joint like an oaf, unwillingly helping the hero find the weapon that'll finally take him down. We're almost there, too. Although, by now, it's become embarrassingly obvious that the treasure was hidden right around where we started all along. These maps have just been leading us all in a big, stupid circle. I should have seen it coming. I guess that's my bad. In terms of bonehead moves, that's English. One, Vriska, one. So, I guess we're even. But maybe we don't have to mention the detail that my, we document my heroism in the annals of greatness. <laughs> or mention that detail when we do that. Ah, uh, mention what exactly? Exactly. <laughs> I almost forgot how deceptively quick you are in the uptake, John. That's not impressive. I was confused by what you were saying, too. <laughs> Tavros, if you're going to interrupt, don't mumble. And even then, don't. Anyway, I don't really mind the fact that all these cryptic treasure maps have led us all in a wild honkbird chase. <laughs> I've never once complained about a good long treasure hunt, and I'm not about to start now. Besides, the way space-time works out here, who can say for sure we would be able to find the treasure at all unless we trace this exact path? Nobody can say that is who. Least of all, English, who as far as we know can't actually speak so much in ish as issue blood-curdling roars that cleave the foundations of reality itself. You're of course welcome to join us on our adventure for as long as you're asleep. We can use another hand on deck. I'll even give you a rank and title. You get to be lower than me. That's the fairest rule. <laughs> or you get to be lower than me. That's the fairest rule. Wrong. Tavros, who's the captain here? Last time I checked, it wasn't Swabby, swabby Nitrum Poop Master Extraordinaire. 
<laughs> Jeez. <clears throat> Solix has got two eye patches. <laughs> I don't think that's how that works, buddy. Ah, <laughs> uh, by the way, hi Tavros. How have you been? Okay. Cool pirate outfit you have there. Uh, no thanks, but it's more cool. Uh, it's not cool. It's dumb. Riska wants me to wear it though, so I do. So she'll be happy. Don't ask me where my pants are. I wasn't going to. We all look amazing as pirates. This is non-negotiable. Ah, uh, no argument here. What about the rest of your crew? I remember her, that punky one who always likes to stab me with her spear. But I really hope she doesn't do that this time. <laughs> Dream on, you blue nerd. You and my crosshair, sucker. Gotcha, gotcha, right where I want. Just biding my time, biding and biding. Like the president, <laughs> gonna hunt you till we're both double dead. You're my obsession, little bluefish. My shrimpiest of whales. My mobiest of dicks. Call me fish mail. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> but I don't know about the one who looks kind of like your sister. What's her name? Arania. Hi. What about those two over there? <laughs> These are my friends, Aradia and Solix. I've recruited them for this expedition as specialists. They aren't really here to do any fighting, but their abilities will become useful once we retrieve the treasure. Hello. Ah, uh, are you alive? Your eyes don't look spooky and ghostly. Thanks. Yes, I am alive. Yeah, er... <clears throat> Yeah, apparently she intends to stay that way, hence her principled, if somewhat lame, commitment to pacifism. But considering our history together, I'm willing to let bygones be bygones. <laughs> yeah, when I obliter had her obliterated, I'm happy to have her on my crew in whatever capacity she likes. Your history? What happened? <gasps> Wait, that's a rude question, sorry! Riska killed her too. She used, the she used the other guy there tragically as the death weapon. Hey, what did I say about bygones being bygones? That's like rule fucking one of this ship. Anyway, she became a robot and killed me back, so obviously we're cool now. Jeez, why does everyone always die so much? Well, this guy's one to talk. <laughs> Solix, don't make our guest uncomfortable. He's already uncomfortable, as he should be. We all should be. I forgot he doesn't have the lisp anymore because he's dead. <laughs> Really, I haven't thought about any of that in a long time. Ancient conflicts don't mean anything to me anymore, but I was more than thrilled by the opportunity to go on another adventure like this. We used to enjoy such campaigns together all of the time when we were younger. Of course, now those teams are a little different. Smile. Yeah, er, yeah. Man, those were the days. What about you? Why do you have double eye patches? Uh, because I'm blind, stupid. I can't tell if you're alive too or not, because I can't see if your eyes are spooky. They're spooky as shit, but yes, I'm alive. Okay, here's the short version. I used to be able to see, but then I went blind. Then I used my powers too hard and died, but it turns out I was only half dead. Half dead? Let me finish! So the ghost half of me could see again, so I was only half blind. But then somebody prototyped my corpse, which I guess sucked the ghost half out of my body to make me fully alive again. Also fully blind. And now the ghost part of my soul is sharing a sprite body with FUCKING ARIDAN! Of all people. That was Aridan. <laughs> Just the douche who blinded me in the first place. It doesn't even matter. Ah, uh, alright. But I don't think I quite followed all of that. What does your what does being half dead mean? You know, forget it. I'm so sick of telling this story to people over and over, and nobody understands what the hell I am talking about. It's all so simple. Uh, no, actually it isn't. It's a fucking stupid story that makes no sense. Maybe that is the problem. <laughs> My marginal existence is fraught with so much pointless duality and complicated nonsense, so I'm done even trying to explain it. From now on, I should just wear a shirt that says, Don't ask me about my disability or my mortality. Then everything would be fine. <laughs> It's really kind of a shame Gamsey prototyped Aridan's torso parts and swiped the ghost from the afterlife. I bet he would have had a great time on this voyage. I used him, I used to own him during our nautical campaigns all the time. If he was on this ship, I'd walk the plank and plummet through the fake ass water through infinite nowhere forever. Besides, you act like you haven't already recruited at least 50 fucking Aridans from Doom timelines in your army. You really are shamefully prejudiced against our alternate reality ghost selves. They're just as real as we are and have the same emotions and everything. Give me a break, Solix. Hey, if you don't view them exactly the same way. We've got the real Eridan and then pretty much a whole bunch of pretenders out there. 
They're all real. Shit, I don't even like Eridan. But here I am sticking up for his copies. <laughs> See? You just called them copies. But even you can't avoid accidentally using a problematic slur which reveals that no matter what you believe about your morals, deep down you're always going to favor the original, while viewing all others as duplicates of lesser value. Oh, oh, whatever. Just whatever. Rationalize the collateral damage to your army all you want. And to think, before I joined your party, I heard rumors that you might have changed. Like learned to be a better person or something. Haha! <laughs> yeah, right! Oh, please! I hardly think I'm a bad person for failing to give a shit about a billion, billion meaningless dead Napitas, do you? No, you're not a bad person for that particular reason, I guess. <laughs> What am I seriously supposed to do? Fly around and befriend each one individually? Sorry, I have better things to do with my time. Let's at least try to be a somewhat practical here. I've met all those Nepotas, they're all very nice. Oh, shut up! <laughs> You're not helping. And what about all those ships up ahead? Are they part of the treasure hunt too? Of course! That's my army. <laughs> Okay, I mean, our army, but like, on boats. <laughs> Isn't an army on boats called a navy? John, help me out. I seem to be having trouble remembering which of us is the captain. Was it the dork in blue pajamas, or the veteran sailor in a rad captain's coat? Oh right, the captain was me. And I say it's an army that happens to be a bunch of boats. Oh, oh damn, he got smoked. Wow, so smoked. Mina, did you catch those sick fires? No, but for real, it pretty much is a navy, just saying. Who's in the ar er, who's in the army? Thousands of ghosts, primarily those of old friends and acquaintances. <laughs> that are being mind controlled? Also Latula's in there. <laughs> I mean, a uh, Latula anyway, and uh multiple cankries, okay. We've amassed a coalition of eager volunteers ready to lay down their ghost lives for a worthy cause. You mean fighting Lord English? When we're ready for that, yes, but we need the treasure first, so for now they're sailing well ahead of us in large numbers to attract his attention, so he can do more damage to the ring and fill out the rest of the maps. We should be very grateful for their bravery. They are making a noble sacrifice for us all. Bravery, yeah right. I'm, I'm mostly sure she's mind controlling them. <laughs> God damn it, Tavros. We really don't need your play-by-play -play commentary on everything. Wait, you're mind controlling all those ghosts? No! Well, not all of them. Once you group enough together, others tend to latch on to the mob out of curiosity. We trolls have a way of clustering together naturally. You've got to understand, John. Most of these people are pretty self-absorbed. They just need a little bit of persuasion to join the cause. Word! <laughs> yeah, but is that still kind of... uh... dickish? <laughs> but all these stubborn jackasses are going to double die anyway if we don't all work together and kill this guy. This is war, John. In times of war, difficult decisions have to be made with the lives of many. Just think of me as a general giving orders to my troops. It just so happens that the orders are a little more direct in this case. Hey, Sir Cat Deuce! Let's not lose track of who's actually in charge of the shit, okay? Yeah, yeah. I'll hail her imperious teen condescension, the fresh new face of tyranny, Supreme Admiral Pixies. At this time, I would like to motion for a 15-minute bowing break so that we may demonstrate our reverence for this bold, spunky leader. Yes! Tavros, stop bowing. That was a joke. No, keep doing that. Lower, Swabby, lower. Face on the fucking deck. Yes, just like that. Perfect. Um, how are you mind controlling so many ghosts at once? Isn't that kind of hard? Well, I do have a little help. Didn't I, John, did I mention my ancestor? She's the best! She is? I must admit, I was not in favor of the idea at first, but Vriska made a very strong case for you. Er, I must admit, I was not in favor of the idea at first, but Vriska made a very strong case for using our combined powers in this way. In a perfect reality, no one would have to get hurt, but the stakes are too high to be shying away from such measures. See what I mean? <laughs> See what I mean? The best. Ah. <laughs> uh. 
It has been wonderful spending so much time on this adventure with my descendant, not just because it has helped me to get to know her better, but because it has opened my eyes to things about myself I was never really in touch with. There are certain capabilities within me I have never quite been able to face, and she's helped me realize I've been hiding them all in my life and well beyond. It must be true what they used to say on my world, that if you really want to know who you are, look to the legacy left behind by your ancestor. I think that wisdom works in both directions. Well, well put, er, well put, my keys. I've always felt the exact same way. Puke! Oh my god, the Cirque Twins being adorable again! Nitrum, get your mop ready for swabbing up all this vomit coming out of my mouth. <laughs> Ew, no! Can you two stick a fork in the sentimental carp? Maybe pretend you ain't hit it off so good. You ever stop and think about how this makes me feel? There's no reason to be jealous, Mina. You know nothing has changed about our friendship. Jealous? Bitch, no! Just makes me think about my kid descendant, and how instead of having a cool, frenzy relation with her, I just got this uncomfortable urge to stab her to death so she doesn't threaten my supremacy, you know? Which is a shame, because she's so cute. God damn, my royal blood must be the cray junk it makes me have to do. Oh well, maybe someday I'll find an heiress whose my genes don't instinctively make me want to murder on sight. Then I can teach her the badass ways of being a boss and shit. God, trolls are so weird. <laughs> God. <laughs> John just said trolls are weird. He said it quietly, but I heard him. Hey, you snitch. Yeah, but aren't we? Uh... Moral of the story is, Blue Kid is a dumb nerd, but is right when he says stuff. Look at that, it's like me and him are becoming fast frogs, thus lulling him into a sense of false confidence already. What? Soon, my little whale. Soon. <laughs> I, I love this. This is the funniest dynamic in a long time. This is actually good. <laughs> It is true. To a human, the ways of trolls from both Alternia and before us will seem very strange. In fact, prior to uniting in the afterlife, even the two groups of trolls were reasonably alien to one another. I've had a great deal of time to study the cultures of many species throughout Paradox Space. No matter which race you belong to, one can always find another whose ideals pose a challenge of comprehension to even the most open-minded. And though the ethical standards of those from Alternia seem, may seem unpalatable to you, Rest assured that there are beings elsewhere in the cosmos whose violent behavior would be considered extreme even to most trolls. <laughs> Actually, John, I'm very glad you brought this up, because I was in the middle of a wonderful story about this very subject, which you interrupted when you boarded our ship. Oh, uh, sorry? <laughs> No, that's fine. Really, it's qu I'm quite pleased you did. This way I get to start over from the beginning. <laughs> oh, yes, I do. <laughs> Friska, too. Oh. I didn't even realize it was a gif. <laughs> there were some rough patches in my original telling which I can go back and fix. This time it will be much better. Ah, uh, okay. What's the story about? It's a tale about a very mysterious alien race called Cherubs. Let us begin. Once upon a time... World building. <laughs> there was a very mysterious alien race called Cherubs. Arania? I thought you said you'd fix the shitty parts of the story. You started with that crappy line the first time, too. The opening line is fine. It's aight, I guess. Not. <laughs> oh, shut up and let me tell my story. Now, where was I? Ah, uh, there was a mysterious alien race called Cherubs. Right, there was a very mysterious alien race called Cherubs, but there was only one Cherub in particular who, for at least the first half of our story, will be our heroine. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh jeez. She spent- wait, how long have I been going? 43 minutes? Let's get to this next time! Woo! <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoyed. Um... Friska sacrificing a bunch of ghosts. <sighs> I can see why she's <laughs> so controversial. <laughs> but I mean, look, I have to appreciate it because I think at least she is consistent. You know what I mean? In terms of like a complex villain in Homestuck, Friska's really the only one. <laughs> and it's kind of because she's an anti hero, right? She's basically the Punisher. When you really think about it. 
<laughs> yeah, I'll kill anybody for the sake of justice, essentially. Um, so yeah, that's, that's cool. Sure. Uh, what should be the question of the day? Um, rank the members of Riska's main crew. That's a fun one. We love ranking things here, right? So you've got Tavros, Vriska, Mina, Arania, Aradia, and Solix. That's a pretty fun crew, honestly. That's a lot of characters that I generally like. Like, I don't think there's a single character on that boat that I dislike. So, you know, worst you get is like B tier. <laughs> also, I think the uh, the Mina wanting to stab John just because it's fun is very funny. <laughs> That's like a classic Homestuck bit. That would be something that like would happen in like Act Two, you know, <laughs> where like there'd be like one of Jack's minions would get obsessed with trying to stab one of the kids or something. That that would be something that would happen. And it looks like we're the universes are coming together. Although I don't have any idea why we would start that with Evil Jade. Honestly, it sucks. I, I was really. I was really going to enjoy seeing them actually reunite, but all she got to say was, Hi, hey, where are your pants? And then disappear. <laughs> oh well, I'm sure things will happen soon. Yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say. We're going to get a... Starting with a history lesson from Arania next time is going to be annoying, but whatever. It's fine. <laughs> At least it's lampshaded a bit. <laughs> all right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.